Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Toned In Entertainment where we love pop culture. It's time for another comic book discussion. Now what separates a discussion from a review is a discussion is for a series that has already wrapped up, which leads us to our discussion for He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse, issue number two. Now issue number two kicks off with a battle going on in the Tri-Solar System. One of the Guardians, Lieutenant Flipshot, says his sensors have detected an unusual energy spike and the mutants have taken over the ship. Captain Hideon replies that it must be Skeletor and they should have sent him back to the Dark Ages when they had the chance. But luckily for the Guardian, Space He-Man is here to lend a hand. He tells his pilot Mara to dock their spacecraft so he can look into the chaos. Inside the starship, Movie He-Man reminds Prince Keldor that they need to track down Anti-He-Man before he gets to the source that powers the universe, and that they will need the assist of Keldor's magic. Now Prince Keldor tries to reinforce his point from issue number one that his magic sucks and so must Movie He-Man's attention span as he doesn't listen either. Pint-sized He-Man tells Keldor that he shares energies with Anti-He-Man and that if he just concentrates even for a second, they might be able to save the blue world below. After some convincing from Pint-sized He-Man, Keldor decides to fire up his magic and give it a shot. Inside the docking bay, Space He-Man is getting ready to seek out the mutants. And from what I can assume from the conversation is that he asks Mara to stand behind, but she's having none of that as she tells him that staying behind is for little boys like Kaz and Prince Adam. Much like Space He-Man looks like a ripoff of the He-Man most of us grew up with, these mutants also look like a ripoff of the bad guys that we also grew up, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for. Now there is a quick battle here, but it's stopped by the Commander Mutant, who believes they might be manipulated into battle. Space He-Man tells the Commander that he's glad he came to his senses, and what's Skeletor's angle this time? The Commander tells him it's not Skeletor, and to take a look into his sword. As the sword flashes, the sorceress cries out with a warning that something comes for the heart of Eternia. And that something is Anti-He-Man who makes his way to the core of the ship looking for the spirit of Castle Grayskull. As Keldor continues to use his magic, he's jolted like a lightning bolt through his body. Pint-sized He-Man tells him that he did it, but Keldor replies that this is why he doesn't like to use big spells, and when he can't control it, it hurts like hell. Prince Keldor tells him that he believes that someone has used a teleportation spell and that someone else who possesses magic powers is also on the ship. But Prince Keldor comes to realize that this is no ordinary person with magic, but another him. This universe is Skeletor. Once again, this Skeletor from this universe looks like a bootleg version of the Skeletor we are most familiar with. Along for the ride with this Skeletor is Krita, who was featured back in the New Adventures of He-Man cartoon. Skeletor tells Krita that, all knowledge and energy in the universe lies unguarded and is ripe for the taking. But this Skeletor is in shock when someone yells out, Keldor! And Skeletor replies, what? Who dare uses that name? Movie He-Man replies, He-Man dares. Pint Sight's He-Man chimes in with, also He-Man. And while our He-Mans aren't afraid of this Skeletor, Prince Keltor is somewhat traumatized as he believes he's looking into the face of death. As Skeletor lashes out at Movie He-Man, he throws out an insult by calling him an oily barbarian. Movie He-Man tells Skeletor that an evil greater than we've ever seen has come for his universe and to take a look closer that he's not this Skeletor's He-Man. In a fit of rage, Skeletor ends up inadvertently sending Krita flying through the air. Now there's a lot going on over this two page spread, but most importantly, there's a system failure which is causing the ship to spiral out of control. Now Skeletor agrees to stop fighting as he sees all the chaos going on around him. He tells movie He-Man, looks like it's gonna take some pretty big heroes to stop the madness, and maybe with two He-Man, they can do the job. Skeletor decides to wander off, but not trusting him, movie He-Man tells Prince Keldor to keep a close eye on him. Now as anti-He-Man continues to destroy the interior of the Ship, Mara tries to whiplash Anti-He-Man, but is stopped quickly. Space He-Man tries to come to the rescue, but he's seen as no threat to Anti-He-Man and even gets insulted with Anti-He-Man saying, Space He-Man, you're ridiculous. As Space and Anti-He-Man battle it out, Skeletor now looks for his opportunity to seize the power he says Space He-Man has stolen from him. But suddenly, Skeletor begins to collapse and asks Prince Keldor to remove his helmet. Now as Skeletor's helmet is removed, we see that his trips through time and space have not been easy on him. 
Skeletor tells Prince Keldor that there's little that magic or technology can do to fix his damaged head. As Keldor goes to take a closer look, he is suckered in and Skeletor is able to harness Prince Keldor's life energy. The ship is in critical condition and is spiraling down into certain demise. And pint-sized He-Man and movie He-Man take one last breath and make a dive through space. Down on the planet, young Kaz notices that something is wrong and that darkness is coming in the middle of the day. And on this page, we see that another He-Man has bit the dust as Anti-He-Man has finished off this universe's He-Man. Anti-He-Man says, I held aloft the magic sword. I said, by the power of Hellskull and the secrets of the universe were revealed to me. As Anti-He-Man continues to ramble on about how he became the whore, Skeletor sees this as an opportunity to strike. But this would be no fight as Skeletor is put down by Anti-He-Man in a matter of seconds. Anti-He-Man looks over at Prince Keldor who is attending to Skeletor and says, Prince Keldor, how nice to see you again, uncle. He goes on saying, just before your ashes rain down upon the boring little world below. Now Anti-He-Man uses the power of Grayskull to transport himself from impending doom. With one last breath, Skeletor hands over his staff to Prince Keldor as he will need it. Now during all this chaos, Movie and Pint-Size He-Man have been able to save the ship from crashing, but they have not saved the power of Grayskull and not Space He-Man. Our heroes fire up the cosmic key and find themselves in a strange land where they will not be in for a smooth ride as we see another universe's Beastman, Trapjaw, Evil Lynn, and of course a new Skeletor with him saying, because this absolute crown jewel of my victory over Eternia is that He-Man's been rotting in hell for the past year. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap up my comic book discussion of He-Man and the Masters of the Multiverse, issue number two. Now, I'm really enjoying this comic book series. I was a huge He-Man fan growing up, so getting to relive He-Man in a whole nother story is definitely a lot of fun here in 2020. And guys, don't think that the comic book discussions have ended because here in issue number three, oh, man, we are going to have a lot of fun. Trust me, because... Hordak shows up with the Horde, and I'm not going to spoil anything else, so guys, make sure you subscribe here to Toned In Entertainment for that future video. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.